An experiment with a spinning disk seemed to mess with gravity itself. Objects placed above it got lighter. Scientists tried to weaponize plasma, firing superheated matter at thousands of miles per second, and one Canadian government project set out to figure out if UFOs were flying with magnetic fields instead of engines. These are government experiments that broke the laws of physics. In the mid 90s, a Russian scientist named Eugene Podloknov claimed he'd found a way to partially block gravity. His setup involved a spinning disk made from a superconducting material, a kind of super cold ceramic that lets electricity flow without resistance. When this disk spun at high speed, Inside a magnetic field, Poklanov said objects placed above it weighed up to 2% less. That might not sound like much, but if this was true, it meant he'd found a way to reduce gravity itself, which completely goes against what Isaac Newton and Einstein told us. The claim made enough noise that NASA actually took it seriously. They tried to replicate the experiment, but never got the exact same results. But if he was right, it would mean we could manipulate gravity, which opens the door to things like gravity shields or new ways to power spacecraft. In the early 2000s, the US Air Force started working on something called the Marauder Project. This was a secret program focused on creating a plasma railgun, a weapon that fires plasma projectiles at insanely high speeds, up to about 3% the speed of light. For context, light travels at roughly 186,000 miles per second, so 3% of that is still over 5,500 miles per second. That's not just fast, it's practically mind-blowing. Plasma is a super hot charged gas, and controlling it in a weapon form means you're working with physics that go beyond what we normally see in everyday life. The Marauder aimed to launch donut-shaped plasma bolts that could destroy targets with extreme precision and power. This involved pushing electrical currents and magnetic fields to their absolute limits, crossing into the territory of like near light speed physics. The exact details are classified, but Marauder showed how military research can test the edges of what physics says is possible. Back in the 50s, Canada launched something called Project Magnet, a government-funded study exploring whether magnetic fields could explain UFO flight. The idea was that if aliens were flying saucers, maybe their craft used magnetism to hover and zoom around, which would break our understanding of physics because it defies how planes and rockets work. Scientists and engineers in Project Magnet installed magnetometers, which are devices that measure magnetic fields, and they placed them at various spots across Canada to detect unusual magnetic activity that might hint at alien technology. They also investigated reports of strange lights and objects in the sky. The project was one of the first official government efforts to take UFOs and aliens seriously. Project Magnet didn't find any alien flying saucers or new physics breakthroughs, unfortunately, at least not officially, but it was ahead of its time in the idea that magnetism could be the key to future technology. Even today, research into magnetic propulsion is still a cutting edge field. In 1989, two chemists, Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons, stood in front of the world and said they'd done something insane. They'd created nuclear fusion in a glass jar on a table. Now, fusion is what powers the sun. It's when atoms smash together so hard that they fuse, releasing a ton of energy. Normally, to make this happen, you need insane heat millions of degrees, which obviously isn't something you pull off in a lab without a nuclear reactor. But these two guys claimed they found a shortcut. They said they'd gotten fusion to happen using a piece of metal called palladium, soaked in heavy water. That's water where the hydrogen atoms are heavier than normal. The way they told it, the palladium somehow packed the hydrogen atoms so tightly together they fused without the heat without the radiation, without the giant facility. Scientists lost their minds. This was going to change the world. No more gas, no more oil, just endless cheap power from a bucket of water. When other scientists tried to copy the experiment, most of them couldn't get it to work. People started calling it junk science, but cold fusion never fully went away. Even now, private labs and startups are still trying to crack it. Starting in the early 90s, the US military and scientific agencies began operating HARP's High Frequency Active Rural Research Program in Alaska. HARP is basically a giant radio transmitter that blasts huge amounts of energy into the ionosphere, which is the layer of Earth's atmosphere filled with charged particles way above us. The official goal was to see how this layer reacts 
when hit with strong radio waves, which helps improve things like communication and GPS. Basically, Harp throws a rock into a pond. Those radio waves create little ripples in the ionosphere, which acts like Earth's invisible magnetic shield. Scientists watch how these ripples move and change to understand how the shield protects us from space weather. But sending that much energy into the sky doesn't go unnoticed, and folks quickly spun conspiracy theories claiming that HARP could control weather cause earthquakes, or even mess with people's minds. None of those stories have ever been proven, but the science behind HARP is legit, and it's pretty cool. The project, officially shut down in 2014, was handed over to the University of Alaska, which still uses it for research. In 2015, scientists at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, basically did the impossible. They caught a ripple in space itself. Two black holes had smashed into each other over a billion years ago, and that crash sent out gravitational waves, like shock waves, through the universe. We'd heard this was possible. Einstein said it was back in 1915, but no one had actually ever seen it happen. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory is made up of two giant tunnels each over two and a half miles long, filled with lasers built to measure movements smaller than a single atom. What LIGO, or L-I-G-O, detected was so small, it's insane. It would be like noticing your car move one trillionth of a hair's width. But that tiny wobble proved something massive. That space-time isn't fixed. It stretches, it vibrates. Moves. Next up, I'm going to talk a bit about muons, which are subatomic particles similar to electrons, but over 200 times heavier, and they can pass through solid objects like rock or steel with ease. Scientists at Fermilab near Chicago have this massive 50 foot wide magnet ring. They've been flinging muons through it to watch how they behave. Now, it sounds weird, but it's important because if the movement of the muons doesn't match, what our physics books say it should, well, something's off. And turns out it is. The way they move seems to show there might be an invisible force or unknown particle interfering with them, something we haven't accounted for in the standard model of physics, which is basically our best blueprint for how the universe works at the smallest level. In 2021, and again in 2023, researchers got results that strongly hinted something strange really is going on. They're still trying to confirm it, but if the anomaly holds up, it could mean one of two things. Either there's a flaw in our current model of physics, or there's something out there we haven't discovered yet. Either way, it'd be one of the biggest shakeups in science for decades. In 1963, the US military dumped 480 million copper needles into Earth's orbit. They wanted to build a backup communication system in case the Soviets ever knocked out global radio during the Cold War. So these tiny needles, each one about 1.8 centimeters long, were meant to act like little antennas floating in space. So if radio signals couldn't bounce off the ionosphere or satellites were down, they'd bounce off this artificial belt instead. The idea came from Lincoln Labs at MIT. It was launched under a program called Project Needles, later renamed Project West Ford. They figured that by placing these needles into a circular orbit above Earth, they could make a crude but reliable way to keep communication alive in a worst case scenario. Well, when the needles were deployed, they didn't exactly form the tidy ring scientists were hoping for. Most of them clumped together and radio signal testing was underwhelming. The project was eventually shelved, but not before astronomers lost their minds over it. A lot of them saw it as just littering space with metal debris, and it set off this wave of protest from scientists around the world. Even though it didn't work out, West Ford did show how far governments were willing to go during the Cold War to the point of turning Earth into a giant radio antenna. The US government has been pouring money into quantum teleportation since the early 2000s. Now what is quantum teleportation though? Well this involves transferring information from one place to another instantly without anything physically moving in between. It works by using something called quantum entanglement. That's when two tiny particles become linked but not physically linked. See, the funny thing is, once this link happens, if you change one particle, the other reacts instantly, no matter how far apart they actually are. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. 2004, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, which is the Pentagon's research arm, they helped set up a working quantum teleportation network 
in Boston. It connected Harvard, Boston University, and a tech firm called BBN. Basically, they used this entanglement trick to send ultra-secure messages. If anyone tried to intercept the message, the entanglement would break, and the system would know right away. That's also what makes this so crazy. It's not just fast, it's almost unhackable. You can't read the message without leaving fingerprints. The experiment proved that it could work in real world conditions, not just labs. The technology is still in its early stages, but if this scales up, it could totally change how we communicate across large distances. Scientists found some very odd results in a test that could completely change our model of physics. So in 2022, scientists at Fermilab, a massive government-funded particle lab near Chicago, announced they'd been studying this tiny thing called the W boson. And their measurements said it was heavier than it was supposed to be. But first of all, what is a W boson? Well, it's a tiny particle that helps certain types of nuclear decay happen. It basically carries one of the fundamental forces of nature, the weak nuclear force, which is what makes radioactive stuff break down. According to our best theory of how the universe works, called the Stanford model, we can predict the W boson's mass almost exactly. But when the Fermilab team measured it, they found it was heavier than the theory said it should be. Not just by a little, by quite a large margin. If their result is correct, it means there's something wrong with the current model of physics. Something is either missing or we're just not getting something. And then in 2023 and 2024, scientists at the Large Hadron Collider in Europe tried to measure the same thing. Their results were totally normal though. So now you've got two of the world's biggest physics labs arguing over whether one of the building blocks of reality is wrong. They technically weren't arguing, but they were surprised by the results. Either Fermilab's equipment was off, or we just found the crack that could lead to a brand new kind of physics. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.